Hey there, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and tonight we got a great guest. Somebody we all love. Rebecca Davis, say hello. Hello, everyone. If you can see Jazz Hands. Yeah, there she is. All righty. <laughs> and uh, George, we got lots to talk about tonight, and we got lots to talk about with you. If you've got a question for Rebecca or for us tech-wise, put it in the chat room. I know Jeff Holman is out there somewhere, and he'll get it to us, and we'll get this... We'll get this thing rolling, right, guys? Woohoo! All right, voiceover body shop, right now. From the outer reaches, they came, bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive, from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Yes. yes. Well, welcome to another edition of VoiceOver Body Shop. And uh, we're all surviving here. We're trying to make the best of it in this weird time and uh, trying to get things done remotely. And sometimes things go well, sometimes not so well. Sometimes not so well. We're going to spin this one tonight. Tonight, we're doing, for those watching the show live, we are doing a Pride Month tribute. Is that what it is? See on the screen right now for the live viewers, our color bars. Let your freak fly, colors fly. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, everyone <laughs> watching live, but at least you can still listen and still ask Great questions of Rebecca and us. <laughs> because, because she wants to answer your questions. But we got questions for her, too. Rebecca Davis, welcome officially to being an actual guest, featured guest here on Voice Over Body Shop. Hello, thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. We yeah. clearly are saving the best guests for last because this is the last Voice Over Body Shop show we're ever going to do. Ever. What? Ever in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am honored, my friend. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't ready for that. Are you telling me something I don't know? No, it's okay. It's the last one we're going to do with V Mix. Let's All right. put it that way. <laughs> oh, great. All right. Anyway, uh, the guinea pig that does not work. Yes. Right. Well, anyway, Rebecca, welcome to the show. It's Thank so you. so glad to. Now we've known each other, oh, for at least ten years. I think so. A time is, I have no idea, but I think about 10 years. I think we first met at a FAF. No, it was, it was at Voice 20, 2008. Oh my gosh, you're right. Yes. It was my first ever voiceover event ever, ever. Yes. Which would have been when Dan and I met too. So that's it, something. We had. Right. It's, it's reunion time. Yeah, I know. But uh, yeah, no, and I remember meeting you and saying, who is this lovely curly haired girl over here that's so incredibly bubbly? You're sweet. Oh, I try. And uh, <laughs> and, and, and you've, you've had quite the career since then. And you're still a kid. You know, <laughs> you can't complain. <laughs> I, I am a kid still. Uh, yes. And we're at least acting like one. So where exactly where are you from originally? Um, I guess I grew up in New Jersey. 
I was born in Texas, but somehow went from there to Connecticut and then mostly Jersey from third grade till uh, I was done. And then I went to Austin, Texas. And I was like, I'm not meant to be a Jersey girl. Let's get the hell out of Dodge. Yeah. <laughs> How long were you in Austin? Uh, about seven or eight years. Okay. A little hazy in there. All right. <laughs> and then I kind of woke up one day and said, it's time to go. Let's go to grad school. And ended up in Los Angeles somehow. Very Never cool. thought I'd be here. Yeah. <laughs> But you, you were, you've, you've been acting, you know, since a young age, I take it. Yes. Tell, I, tell uh, us about it. I was a child actress. Cue the violins. Um, yeah, I've kind of been doing this all my life. I can't remember a time when I wasn't an actor. Um, and so, yeah, I did all the shows. And I was, and I was in Annie, like every orphan in Annie, except for Duffy, for those you crazy <laughs> Annie fans out there who understand what I'm saying. But yeah, I did the whole tri-state area circuit and then went to undergrad, did more acting and just haven't stopped. I don't know what I would do if I wasn't an actress. It's scary. Well, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's got, it's got to be in your gallbladder to be an actor. Uh, it's no in my toes. It's everywhere. I feel it in my finger. Uh, you're too young to know that song. Anyway. <laughs> Peter, oh, Peter and Gordon. But anyway, um, so uh, you, you, you did lots of acting. How did you drift your way into voiceover, though? Uh, good question. When I was living in Austin and I, I finished school and I got an agent and she sent me one day for an audition for uh, anime, which at that point I had no idea what it was. And she said, just go. You'll find out. And I went and I got behind a microphone. I was like, this is fun. And then I booked it. And then I started doing anime in Austin and just fell in love with it, fell in love with the microphone, all of it. And then, uh, then I came out here to LA and kind of forgot about it a little bit. And then, uh, but I was kind of new, I don't know. And then one day out here, I, I was doing the artist's way, which is wonderful for any of you who don't know about it. And uh, at the end of it, all the people that, that I was doing it with said, why aren't you pursuing voiceover? You keep talking about it, that that's something you wanna do. And it just was this little light bulb. And uh, I stopped doing on camera and was like, I'm not doing this anymore. And just put all of my focus onto voiceover at that point. And yeah, that's the shortened version of the long version. Okay, well, you could have given us the long version. <laughs> we're willing to you know to, you know we've, we've got an hour here you could just ramble on for as long as you want to do <laughs> so what type what type of work do you specialize in what have you been um, kind of stuff you've been doing yeah my my heart is in animation and video games and and part of that i think comes from just having that pure acting background and always wanted to wanting to inhabit characters and get deep into things and what i love about voiceover and, and animation and video games is I, you know, we talk about this all the time. I could play a six-year-old boy. I could play a 90-year-old woman and, you know, a dog, stuff that I can't do on stage, stuff that I can't do on film. Um, I'm not typecast, which is, not, I mean, I do get a lot of the same types of stuff, but in a different way. Mm -hmm. um, and I still do commercial and promo and narration and everything else. But when I get those animation and video game auditions and jobs, my heart just starts getting so excited but I'll, I'll take the you know i'll take the commercial money i'll do commercials but <laughs> well, that's yeah. like oh yeah. it gets me going that's me going. that's the gravy you know i mean you're, yeah. you you got to keep yourself working you get a good commercial that's just gravy exactly that keeps you going to the next one that's right you know i mean it's you know we're, as actors we're always unemployed until our <laughs> next, until our next gig our job is finding our next job. Our job is auditioning. Our, I mean, there's so much more to it than that. Yeah. But uh, it's getting the next job is our job, really. Yeah. But but animation and gaming is your favorite stuff. That's the stuff you yeah. really like doing. Oh, I love it. A little sinking in my teeth. Yeah. Just, what yeah. What do you think is the key to really to, to really scoring in that particular genre? Because everybody wants to do it. Because everybody says, "Well, I can make funny voices," and I'm like, "Yeah, well, it's not exactly how you get into voiceover and doing animation. It's maintaining characters." But what what do you find is working for you? Uh, bingo! You're right about saying it's not about funny voices. Um, it's about the characters. 
it's about doing the character work. It's about going back to the basics of who are you talking to? What's going on? Where did you come from? All the stuff that we learned that we're doing on stage and in film and really taking that on and using your imagination and putting yourselves in the situations that you may not be in in your real life most of the time. I mean, I, I played a baby zombie. That is not something <laughs> I, I can personally relate to, I think. How, how did you play a baby zombie? I don't quite get that one. I know. Zo babies can be zombies too, Dan. It's equal. It, you know, anyone can be a zombie. <laughs> But it was very funny. It was very fun trying to, uh, an infant zombie is a very weird concept. And that's why I love animation and video games. And you figured it out. And that's why they hired you. Ba -ba! <laughs> <laughs> I think my favorite bit of direction I've ever gotten once was, can you make the vomit sound more like a river and less like a stream? <gasps> Wow. Best direction ever. And, and your reaction to it was? Yes, I can. <laughs> yes. Always say yes. And. Always oh, I can yes. do that. Sure. Yes, and. Sure. How, how fleshed out was the baby zombie character when you um, got cast? What do you mean? Fleshed out meaning like they knew, they really knew what they wanted. Oh. You had to completely create the character. Yo, they just wanted me to go for it. No. It was like, here's an image of the baby, baby zombie, the little baby oh, zombie well, there you go. trying to crawl. And you're like, <laughs> I mean, just yeah. mix those baby sounds and those zombie sounds. And you, yeah. <laughs> it sounds good. Tonight's like theater of the mind too, folks, because people watching live, all they're seeing is rainbow. So right. it's even better oh, for right. the people watching live. That's true. It's a little creepier, I guess. Yeah, Maybe well, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, we're sort of like these disembodied voices. It's kind oh of... yeah. yeah, that's the fun. That's one of the things like I like about not being on camera is uh, it doesn't matter. You make the craziest faces. I do the weirdest things in the booth, and no shame, no worries about somebody. I mean, except the director, I guess, if they can see you. But I don't really care mm -hmm. about them either. It's right. just get it in every weird spot. That's right. Well, as, as I like to tell our, our home studio clients, nobody needs to see how the sausage is made. You know, it's, yeah. you're only going to hear it. So, you know, if it's going to take contorting and doing that kind of stuff, I mean, physicality is important with acting anyway, especially with voice acting. People don't realize that. I mean, do you put a lot of physicality into when, you, when you're doing games and animation or just any, any type of voiceover? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially I was, uh, working with a director a couple of days ago and the character is um, it's a very large woman. And we were talking about the amount of space that I needed to take up in, in the booth without hurting myself. <laughs> um, my, I tend to speak with my hands and wax shit in my booth a lot. Um, <laughs> but we were just talking about taking that space because somebody who has the big lungs and speaks from their gut is so different than someone who just doesn't take up a lot of space and gets all tiny inside. They talk completely differently. They have a different attitude. Hmm. And yeah, physicality, especially, I mean, like you watch people like Dee Bradley Baker and the people who do creatures and what they do and how they, and it's, I could watch them all the time. It's so cool. They just like transform their body. I keep forgetting no one can see me right now, but I just do it anyway. Hmm. I think it was, it was, it was, maybe it was Tom Kenny or, or maybe, no, or Bob Berger, one of those folks who's in animation. And he was telling us, he says, where, where do you learn how to do this? And yet, look, you can go to coaching and do it. It's watching the other pros do their thing. And I, it must be great being able to watch these people do that kind of work. Oh yeah. Thank goodness for the internet now. And in, in many ways, I mean, it's wonderful and it's horrible and I love it, but being able to, to watch them work and you're never... I mean, no matter what, pro, I, in my opinion, no matter how much of a pro you are, you're never above learning and stop, you're, you can never stop learning. Right. And just watching, you could so easy to just get online and watch people and listen and anywhere. Like I'm, I'm kind of creepy in the sense that I, I, I mean, I guess we should be maybe creepy, but record people a lot 
when I used to be out in public. Um, and just, I'd have my iPhone if I'd hear somebody with a weird sound or a kid and just like try to hide it and record them. I'm pretty sure the NSA is probably tracking me for the amount of times that I've uh, searched online, like five-year-old boy talking. <laughs> Just, right. They're watching you're using me. Duck, duck, go or something that's anonymized yeah. because Six-year-old. you're browsing history. Maybe not Playing so with hot. balls. No. Yes. <laughs> they are searching me constantly. <laughs> but I digress. Yeah. How many games have you done? I I, I would have to count. Um, gosh, probably at least thirty by now. Oh, that's at least i don't know i'm bad at keeping track of that awesome. stuff yeah. some of it's online you know some of it's on on imdb some of it isn't um there are you know it's a mind screw sometimes because i'm like i know people i'm like oh well they have hundreds of of uh credits and video games i'm like here's me but that's where i am now and i would have killed to be me 10 years ago so i'll take my 30 plus there you go there you go. Once again, if you're just tuning in and seeing color bars, you're still we're still you're still hearing us, and we know you're out there because we know you're you're at least listening. Our guest is the one and only bubbly Rebecca Davis, uh, who is a voice actor and does all sorts of interesting stuff. And we just love having her around. And we wish we could have you around more often. Um, I want to see you in person and hug you. I know. I'm. You know. <laughs> Allison Janney says we have to save the hugs. I see that commercial one more time. <laughs> we're all in this together. Together. That's right. In these unprecedented times. No, we're not. You're you're where you are, and our director's somewhere else, and George is in Topanga, and I'm all alone in this big empty studio. My body's here and my head's over here. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Fascinating. You guys can't see what he's holding up right now. <laughs> Someone Sorry. someone's gonna see it anyway. Uh, anyway, if you've got, if any of you have a question for Rebecca, put it in the chat room in Facebook. And I know Jeff Holman is out there somewhere taking down your questions and passing them on to us. And we'll get to them in just a little bit. Uh, Yeah. So how has this quarantining affected your, your voiceover practice? If that's what quarantine, um, you know, it was crazy at first, just like with everybody and trying to adjust and figure out what, I can't stand the phrase, but I'm going to say it, the new normal. Um, but it, you know, it was up and down, which is to be expected um, and kind of navigating, figuring it out. Um, and I'm so thankful, actually partially due to the two of you that I already had a complete home setup and a booth and I already had my Source Connect. I've got I've got Don LaFontaine Source Connect account. Thank you, oh, wow. Voiceover, the Don LaFontaine Voiceover Lab. They gave that to me many years ago, and it's uh, very special. Um, so I was already set up for all of it, um, and my heart really went out to everybody that that wasn't. Depending on where you are, you're you're used to, you know, you've got to set up good enough for auditioning. Um, but not good enough to sustain longer sessions um, or the right equipment and and everything. So my heart's been really going out to everybody. Um, But I feel very fortunate that I was prepared for all of this. Yeah. So um, the most challenging thing has been dubbing projects. That has been an interesting. uh, Yeah. um, How do they have you? I want to know about that. Yeah. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy. I just had one this morning where uh, I've got my Zoom. Well, no, no, no. This one was everyone does it. Every studio does it differently. This one was Skype on my iPad so that I could see the video, but then Source Connect on my computer wired into my booth. Uh, so listening on there, but things were kind of matching up. But the directors in one place, the engineer somewhere else, we're all seeing things in just a little bit of different time. Uh, so that was weird. I had one studio at the very beginning and this was just cool. I was like, yeah, they, uh, they sent me a whole rig. Now I already had the, uh, the mic that they wanted, they wanted me to use. I already had the, uh, 416, but they were sending out this rig because they wanted everybody on the same microphone. So everybody had that same 
sort of sound, even though our spaces were treated differently, but it was definitely more uniform. And somebody arrived in their mask and gloves and sanitized box, a giant box in a bag. And I think there was a third thing to so bring it up, got a whole second mic stand, a giant screen. Um, the, the, the box, the suitcase was amazing what they did because they carved it out. They had foam in it and it was carved out and here was the computer. And then there was the, um, the different extension cords and everything. And here was the mic and here was the, um, the preamp in there and the interface and everything. And it all was labeled of where to put it and what to do. And I got on the phone with the engineer the night before and we tested out all the different spaces and what would be great. And I put my, uh, in my booth, I don't have a monitor, but I've got, for those of you who can see later on, <laughs> um, I have a lovely window. So I was able to put the monitor right at the window. And yeah. this lovely big monitor. And then we were able to change the way my microphone was so I could face it. And, you know, it was the band on the bottom, just moving as you're talking. And it was great. It was, you know, they ran the whole session, didn't have to use any of my equipment. And then I call at the end and somebody came in like an hour to pick it up and do whatever they did with it and disinfect it and bring it off to the next person, I guess. Um, it was, it was fascinating. And I've done that a couple of oh. times. Yeah. So what you're saying is with these guys, apparently money was no object. <laughs> well, I think they had a couple of those setups that just went from place to place. I would imagine I mean, right. maybe money was no object. I don't know. But uh, I mean, I still would rather go into a studio any day of the week at all, like any chance, because also it's just so much more fun and you don't have to think about anything. Right. With the other sessions that I've been doing, I've still had to be engineering myself a little bit. That one, they just took over, which was awesome. Always oh, nice if you can do it that way from home. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Had they, had they, has anybody suggested that they're going to start opening the studios again? Or do we think that this is going to be the new normal that everybody's going to have there to There are some studios that are open. There are some that are trying to. There are some that aren't. Um, everybody has different opinions on it. Um, so who knows? I mean, we might be shutting back down in California, Los Angeles anyway, but. And they all have different precautions that they're sending out ahead of time of like, this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. Um, I hear, you know, you hear different stories from Facebook and what you personally encounter as well. And, you know, everyone's just trying to get by. I feel bad. The studios are they're, they're going out of business. You know, I mean, it breaks my heart. Yeah. We need, we need the engineers. Yeah. Yeah. Am, we do, but we all need home studios. We challenged. Say well, that so again, Dan. We all need our home studios, though. Now, yes, it's, now it's going to be too. vital that you have that. I Absolutely. think if you're if you're an engineer out of work right now, it's time to get really creative, and reach out to some of your past clients or voice actors you worked with, and start offering some kind of a virtual engineering. Because, you know, I'm talking to voice actors who are doing. I mean, what you're describing is kind of like the extreme, like where they literally bring the whole system out. And yeah, do that. But I mean, there is a version of that where they ship it to you and then you set it up and then they can remote run the studio. I don't know if that's what they did in that case, Rebecca. Yeah, was they were remote running it to everything. Yep, they ran everything because they had their whole computer set up in this little box. <laughs> it yeah. was beautiful. I got to solely be an actor yeah, that's and not the way worry. To do it about anything and you know when i'm doing sessions from home with my clients my overseas clients and other clients i'm most of the More time having to worry about that normally stuff. yeah those are those are kind of the norm your normal clients or your normal yeah. sessions my non-la clients yeah i guess you'd say but it's never to that extent i never have a i don't i don't think i've ever had a four hour session at home like before all of this right like with my own clients so it's a, it's, it's a lot. We just want to be actors, but we need to know how to do that stuff now. It's even before the, the way everything is now, we, we needed to know. And thank goodness I had people like you to help show me. And I had the lab. That's how I learned with you, George, how I learned to use Twisted Wave. And I think wow, about so when I first started. Ago. 
Oh my God. How many years ago did the lab open? It was 10? It was more, yeah. than, more than 10. Yeah, at least 10. It was right before we started doing this show that it opened yeah, up. About 10 years. Yeah. They had the, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they just recently had the 10 year anniversary. Well, that of would, their opening. Right. Well, that would seal and, that. Yeah, I was there from the beginning. That place was a gift. Yeah. Once again, we're talking the first rewards that you got was through yeah. that through the lab. Yeah, yeah. The the Don LaFontaine Voiceover Spirit Award was Tell us uh, about that. that was amazing. I don't like, it was crazy. I do remember? <laughs> I know it was so long ago. I mean, maybe what was that? Maybe six six years ago. Sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah, and Eric over there, kind of. Uh, I can't think of the word at the moment, steered me in the wrong direction. He's like, we're having a little luncheon. Can you just show up? Can you come? You know, just dress a little nice. I'm like, what? Because those of you who know me, I'm like a t-shirt and jeans girl. I am not a <laughs> dresser nicer type of person. Um, and then uh, Rebecca from Source Connect was making a speech and then they presented me with this award for emulating Don. And it was- um, High praise indeed. I will not get foot clumped right now, um, <laughs> but it was wonderful. And they they gifted me, as I was saying earlier, Don's original Source Connect account that he used to, I think it was the Simpsons that he worked on when he was in Scotland. Maybe he was like yeah. at a castle and he used it. And I was just learning what Source Connect was. And it just, it, it blew me away. And, and I still have that, obviously. And then, and then you, right after that, that was kind of like my impetus to set up my home studio. And you came to my house, George, and helped me. Uh, that was the closet. Out, oh yeah, yes. figure out my closet and <laughs> set that up where I keep, <laughs> I kept dating myself as well. Surprise, <laughs> surprise. I have a whole reel of bloopers now that I've kept for myself. Oh, good. <laughs> it's like, I think it's about 30 minutes long of all the times that I just hurt myself or I curse or just, something stupid happens or I belch in the middle of a take. I just save them. <laughs> Did, didn't you have a, neighbors that were making a lot of noise too? Um, I had construction <laughs> for a while in my old place. And hey, they're going to build a house next door in my new house. Yay. Oh man, you're really knocking it out of the park. We're just great with that. Yeah, they're building a whole new ridiculously giant house. Um, so, uh, but yeah, we had a, we had a lot of noise. Yeah. in the old place but the space that george helped me with really helped a lot yeah. a, a whole lot and then i got my booth and then that helped but i would have to tell my neighbors there because the house had thin walls and i'm sure for those of you who live in apartments and other things telling your neighbors about when you're screaming <laughs> I'm like i swear my husband isn't doing anything to me i'm fine i know i'm screaming bloody murder I'm, there is I'm, no fire i am not throwing a grenade there is no frack out i'm just being a zombie yeah i'm just a baby zombie. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking with rebecca davis again if you've got a question for her boy she's had a fun career uh throw it in the chat room right now because we'll get to those <laughs> questions in just a little bit one of the things you know that i i really love about what what you do is you're very active in the community, the voiceover community and the community at large as well. Uh, what are some of the organizations you work with? Um, I work with women in animation uh, right now. I've been working uh, as the lead with them for a while in voiceover programming. And um, <clears throat> we had to take a step back for a little bit, but we're ramping back up now. Um, tell us a little great. bit. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about WIA. Uh, women in, uh, in animation, it's, it's basically if they see it then they'll emulate it. If people can see women in power in other positions, then they know <laughs> that uh, inherently that's where you can be. It's you know everything that the world is talking right about right now, you have to see it. Um, and so Women in Animation has been helping to uplift the voice, not, I'm sorry, not uplift the entire animation community from, um, from the writers and storyboard artists and directors and voiceover actors and just really um, strengthening the way women are, uh, the way we're represented, I should say. Uh, I went to one event, uh, Gina Davis was talking and she was amazing. And she said to, she said, I have a challenge for all of you writing out there. Take your lead character and take the character's be or best friend, one of the leads and turn it into a girl. and." That's it. And then just go back and reread your script and see what it changes. 
And so many people afterwards at the little shindig were talking about, wow, why haven't I done that before? Why do I always see the sidekick is, is the guy friend? And it's things like that, that women in animation are, are doing to change things, which is, uh, which is beautiful. <laughs> um, <laughs> so yeah, so I've been working with them and I'm just a big advocate. I work with, um, for those of you in LA, this is an amazing program. I love it. It's so close to my heart. It's called Young Storytellers. And uh, we go into uh, schools that are under uh, underfunded and we work with students. It's about 10 students for eight weeks. And we go in there. Um, there are 10 of us mentors and 10 students. And we work as a group for a while and then one-on-one. -on -one. And by the end of it, they have a five-minute screenplay that they wrote completely from start to finish. And then it's performed for the school um, by actors that come in and do it. A lot of professional actors and uh, they get some big names. And that's how I got involved originally as being an actor and then fell in love with the program. And I've been mentoring there for, I guess, 10 years. I don't know, I've been here 20 years, everything flies. Mm. But uh, it's a wonderful program. And when it's running, it's just the highlight of my week to just go in there because you get to see these amazing kids. I didn't even say they're, they're fourth and fifth graders. And every year there are some of them that in the beginning don't even want to talk. They don't want to say anything. They don't want to participate. And by the end of it, you can't stop them from talking. They just, they open up and it, it changes lives. Um, but it does, it's beautiful. It's that kind of stuff. Just, you know. <laughs> if you can change lives, if you can change one life, you're saving an entire world, which is. Hey, you never know. I mean, that's an the world thing. spoke an interpretive dance. There'd be no war. So let's keep it going. Good point. Anyway, <laughs> we're talking with Rebecca Davis. We're going to take a quick break right now. And uh, if you've got a question for her, please put it in the Facebook chat room. We'd be l just thrilled to have your questions. And I know Rebecca would too. So put them in there right now. Jeff Holman standing by and we'll be right back with Rebecca Davis here on Voice Over Body Shop. Don't go away. You're, You're watching, watching. VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge reward until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. What question do we get most often? Far and away, it's how do I even get started in voiceover? And we have a great answer to that question. Take the voheroes.com free getting started in VO course. You heard right. It's free, and it's available online 24-7 at gettingstartedinvo.com. That's gettingstartedinvo.com. If you've been watching VOBS and thinking that you need to get in gear and start your own voiceover career, this is the course you should start with. You'll learn about the vocal skills you need, the storytelling skills you need, the equipment you need, the business skills you need, and the mindset you need to have all in one single comprehensive online course taught by VO Heroes David H. Lawrence the 17th. This course won the Backstage Reader's Choice Award four years in a row. And again, there's no charge. It's absolutely free. Want to take it? Of course you do. Getting started in VO.com. That's getting started in VO.com. And now a word from Harlan Hogan and VoiceOverEssentials.com. Has this ever happened to you? Embarrassing. 
The washers on these booms, eh, they're not so great at holding up your expensive microphone. And here's the answer. The adjustable boom stop is great. Easy to attach and works like a charm. No more droopy mic. It's simple, ingenious, and infinitely adjustable. The padded non-slip pouch fits almost any size boom arm. Unique double loop webbing system for unlimited angle of the downstrap. Works with tripod and solid round bases. Light gray webbing lets you mark and repeat stand settings for each performer. It's three ounces of protection for your expensive microphone with free standard shipping in the continental U.S. Hold up your mic with the ABS Adjustable Boom Stop. This is Ariana Ratner and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. And, and we're back. And we're back. I think the very first thing everybody just heard was no belching. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think we were on yet. I'll put it on my blooper reel. Yeah, yes. There you go. It belongs. Yes. We haven't put a good blooper reel together for, for this show in a while. But uh, oh, no. We, we edit them all out anyway. Uh, our guest tonight is the, the one and only Rebecca Davis. Uh, just does all sorts of cool stuff. A very active person in the community. She has a dog. Uh, <laughs> Wilbur. I, now, I remember the dog you used to have. I mean, that guy was, he was old. Oh, he was such a good boy. He 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 lived to be about 18. We wow. were never sure how old he was. But he had a, wow. had a very good, good long life. Mr. Yeah. Uh, Samuel Pantalones Davis Jr. Robertson. Okay. Pantalones. That's what you <laughs> do with your dogs. There. Yep. <laughs> and now we have Wilbur Biggles Bartholomew the third. So, you know. Ah, <laughs> very waspy name. Um, <laughs> anyway, if you got a question for, <laughs> for Rebecca, throw it in the chat room. So Al Alan Dubin asks, what would be your dream role? Oh my gosh. Alan. That's actually a really tough question, by the way, I miss you. Um, oh my goodness. Take your time. We don't have a lot of time. A villain? I don't know. For some reason, villain is in there because I, I never get to play the villain, which just sounds like it'd be super fun. Have you auditioned um, for one or? I had auditioned for them, but nothing stuck yet. But you know, with auditions, it's, it, you just never know. Like you take it, like, do you remember those old things, those octopus things that you'd throw against the wall and they would slowly. Yeah. Oh yes. yeah. Yeah. I'm dating myself. Uh, that's what <laughs> I feel like auditions are. Sometimes you just throw it at the wall and you're like, I don't know if it'll stick. Let's find out. But you don't really ever get feedback. It's so rare. So maybe I've gotten close to being in a, to be a villain. I got no idea. Um, Throw that out to your agent. Hey, find me a villain role. Find me a villain. I don't know. I think because it's so far from from uh, myself. You're just far maybe too I am sweet. a villain in someone's story, and I don't know it. I maybe. very well could be. <laughs> <laughs> very. Then we well all want to know what person's stories in which we are the villain. Right? There's I'm really fascinated oh. by that. I really, really am. And a dog. I want to play a dog. <laughs> I'm just going to put that one out there. Hey, universe, I want to be a talking dog. Uh, <laughs> we'll get like, that like George, out. wasn't it a um, George, uh, what's his face? You know, that handsome actor guy? Uh, George Clooney? Yeah, that one. <laughs> you know, he was the first dog on um, the very original um south park really yes i forgot about that he essentially discovered sort of discovered it like he was a little brown dog he i just think so like, and he passed the tape around you know to his to his friends yeah <laughs> i need to watch that show again yeah. so that could be you someday that's it that'll you could I just could work that. harder i could just work harder and be better just, yeah, just be, be better, better. Work harder. Do your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
you know, I, I, in, in video games now, of course, you know, women seem to be taking a very domineering role in a lot of this stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, there's always some like, yeah. woman superhero, and which means there has to be super villains. Oh, yeah. And I mean, The Last of Us right now, the character of Ellie, I'm not going to put any spoilers out there for you people who are freaks like me, okay. but she's such a badass. So cool seeing women kick ass in video games. It's the yeah. best. Just, I don't know. Right. <laughs> it makes me excited. All right. Well, I'm <laughs> glad to hear that. Um, Here's one from our own. Should we do the one from our own chat moderator? Yeah, sure. Jeff has a good question there. Mr. Jeff Holman. You mentioned you made a conscientious decision to switch away from on camera, just going full on VO. He says, I can't imagine doing that. Why do you like voiceover better than on camera? Good question. Um, there are a, a lot of reasons um, for me and some people who are on camera, people will disagree and that's fine. That world was hurting my soul. Um, it's just, it just hurt walking into auditions and, and being sized up and just the, the, the people, I, I, the, the positive spin on it is the voiceover community um, is just, it's so welcoming and so kind and so generous and it's my tribe and it's my people. And once I started doing it in LA, I just kind of knew like, oh, this is, yeah, this is it. I just, the, the, the on camera world, it was good to me, but it just wasn't satisfying. I think it was, there was a moment where I was called in for an audition in Santa Monica and I lived on the East side. And of course it was probably at like five o'clock and I was just, not happy about it. it was just was, come on. And my agent, my on-camera agent, when the phone would ring, like my heart would sink. I'm like, what now? But when I get an audition for voiceover or to go to a studio or something, I'm super excited about it, no matter what time it's at. Like, I'll drive to Santa Monica at five o'clock. Sure. And that is a huge change in thinking and, and that difference of, oh, I really enjoy this. Yeah. So why was I pursuing something that I was unhappy doing I, I that that's actually quite interesting because i you know i had pretty much the same experience if you you know like you go to the casting lounges and all these people are staring at you and everybody you know some people are in costume and so you know it's like well they're gonna pick this guy because he looks better than me or he looks like the part and why am i here and it's parking and driving and it's insane trying to be an actor in this town oh and this i can't even especially now if you told me like you're gonna go back and on camera I mean, if you handed me a roll, it'd be oh, okay. Oh, yeah, of course. But it's 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 a different kind of beast now. It's yeah. yeah, but you get sized up. It just never felt like the vibe was never good when you'd walk in a room. But when you walk into a studio, the vibe is just always it's just good. Yeah. It's just good people. Right. And and the voiceover community itself, you know, you and I have been involved in it for years. You know, we're supportive of each other. A rising tide floats all boats. Oh yeah. Absolutely. That was one of the things early on with going to the conventions and going to like Voice and Fafcon and Wovo. And there's so many now and VO Atlanta and One Voice. It's always, oh, I have great information. Let me share it with Please. you. Yeah. Instead of let me hoard it so you can't be my competition. Because we all sound different. We all approach things differently. It's, it's competitive, but I feel like I'm more competitive with myself is the person I'm most competitive with. Absolutely. Uh, now, one of the interesting things, you, 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 well, you can't do a lot of it right now, is you, you like to travel. Yeah. And you, you, you have a blog called the, the Voiceover in Ninja. Tell us about that. Um, well, really, it's, it's more my Instagram was uh, Became Ninja's blog. Look, I even have, you guys can't see, but I even have a little microphone ninja. Oh, here he is. Oh, <laughs> cute. This woman makes them for me in England. Um, and <laughs> short version, because people are like, did you just come up with that for marketing sometimes? Is uh, my husband is going to kill me for sharing this with everyone. Um, it, 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 we had a game, my husband and I had a game many, many years ago um, called Ninja where you would just jump out and scare the shit out of each other, no matter where we are. Like, what's the best way to scare <laughs> each Sounds other? Like Inspector Cluso in Cato. <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> just like anywhere in public, like we did not care. Um, and that became 
I don't care, but to say it, naked ninja, the best kind. You don't expect it to happen. Um, <laughs> and now I'm getting red. You can't see me. It's really fun. Um, and so we just became ninjas, we called it. And so one day I had gotten, I think it was one of, the, this might have been the original. Anyway, um, to go with us, because like you said, traveling is our thing. And so I got a little ninja. I found um, this woman in England. And it, oh, it is, this is the original ninja because he's all broken. Anyway, oh. <laughs> and attacked a <laughs> number of times. In there. Yeah. He went yeah. around. And so that was the way, instead of taking selfies everywhere and stuff, we would just document our travels and adventures. And then it became, it was just us. And then all of a sudden I would bring it with me everywhere. So if I'm bored somewhere, I'd be like, where can I put Ninja here? And like try and find a place to hide it and take a picture or do something weird. And it just became from there, it just kind of blew up into something very fun. And I, then I had to get a lot of ninjas because they started, like one fell off a boat. <laughs> and, like, and it was just stressing out my husband so much. Like, we need to get you more. I can't handle this anymore. So, yeah. So ninja can't travel right now. But I, st I mean, like, I have enough ninja pictures to fill so many albums. One day I'll actually make one. But it's fun. <laughs> Well, traveling yeah. is fun. Traveling is fun. fun when it's safe. Well, traveling, yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Is anyone having gonna, an ninja is fun. Yeah. Is anyone going to want to get on an airplane again? It's, it's fascinating. <laughs> it I'll let you know how it goes. It hurts. <laughs> <laughs> we were supposed to go to Japan before all this started. I was saying to you guys, China and Japan, and we all know how that went. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. And, you know, I just hope everyone is okay. And one day we can all travel again. I can't wait. A couple more questions trickled yeah. in. Yeah. Shante Yerby. I'm well, hoping that's the right way of saying that name. Looks right. Um, what is one thing you wish you knew when you first started out? I'm going to assume that she's asking about voice acting, started out voice acting. That's a great question, Shante. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right as well. Oh, goodness. The one thing. Um, Gosh, everybody you know is meant to be there in a very philosophical kind of way. But you come across, and I guess this is life as well, but you come across people for different reasons in your life. And I wish that I had kept in touch with people that I had met early on in this career um, for so many different reasons, a myriad of reasons, but I think every single person you meet could be your next co-star, could be your next friend, could be your next, I guess, playmate, could be your next director. Um, and not that I've ever burnt bridges in my life, I don't think, at least with voiceover, um, but uh, maybe a few here and there, who knows. But uh, I, I guess I wouldn't say I wish I had known that because I'm always like, be kind to everyone you meet, but your receptionist is going to be an agent one day. The person at the front desk at the studio is going to be a director one day. And I guess that's more like my advice really than something I wish I had known. Mm. Just, just be nice. Nobody wants to work with a douche. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, no, I, I can, I can agree with that one. Uh... <laughs> you know? All right, we got one from Lee Penny. Lee, where are Lee. you, man? Hi. Yes, uh, this is, is this Rebecca's idea of taking Ninja to the next level? Ooh, <laughs> what, what's my idea of taking Ninja to the next I, level? I don't know, you tell me. I don't know. I mean, how could you Give take it ideas. to the next level? Give me ideas, because I can't make a Ninja in public. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're talking about the little Ninja, you're talking about me. Um, <laughs> You know, I don't really like to ninja strangers so much. Yeah. But you tell me, what do you think I should do to take it to the next level? Because I'm, oh, I need it. Video. Right do, first CGI. person. Yeah, CGI. CGI. <laughs> <laughs> Have a ninja in space. Ninjas in space. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> ninja video. Are we talking ninja human or ninja? Yeah. I'm not exactly sure. Maybe sure. he can clarify. <laughs> Ninja. Which one do you mean, Lee? Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't know how to use Ellen that. had one more question. Um, <laughs> she said, talk about the letters 
that you send to people all over the world. Yes. So, she is um, amazing. Tell us how that is going. You guys. Um, so I started this thing called Postcards for Kindness. Um, check it out on Facebook. Join us. Send letters of love to people. Um, it started in response to in the summer, last summer, fall, we were having that slew of, of gun violence and everything like that. And uh, I had seen this story about a girl who said she was afraid to go out of her house because she thought everybody was bad and that the bad people were going to get her. And it just mm -hmm. like tore me. And so I came up with this idea because I, I wanted to help and you know, donating money and whatnot, you don't really ever know exactly where it's going to go, but something tangible that you can get in real life, I think makes a huge difference, especially right now. Um, so I started Postcards for Kindness and got school boards involved and um, stores like in Dayton, Ohio, all the stores that were involved with the shootings and Walmarts and got all these places involved to give addresses and allow us to send things um, and just started this movement of people like here are the addresses and I started printing up postcards for people and giving them to strangers and stamped and just send them and uh, it grew into this very beautiful thing where suddenly care homes what we call um, nursing homes here in LA in the UK they call them care homes and elderly homes started joining the page on Facebook and it just grew into this whole thing between sending cards to care homes and then they would send them back and it not gonna get the club y'all stop it um <laughs> I have a <laughs> tissue here somewhere. Can you put it through the zoom? Um, Don't get for Clem. You're going to knock my no. cut right off. <laughs> there Stop you go. it. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so it, it just grew into this international movement. And especially right now, people need that more than ever. People need something, a card from a stranger that just says, you're loved or I'm thinking about you. I hope you're okay. It, it just makes a world of difference in my mind. So I'm always collecting you know, I always say, and anybody out here listening right now, if you know somebody that could use a card in the mail um, or something that is celebrating a birthday alone or has lost anything, um, just email postcardsforkindness at Gmail. Send me the address, the name, a little story about it. And as long as you're okay with it being public, I post it to the specific Facebook group and people just start writing. It's amazing. Joan Baker had reached out. Her mom had a birthday and she was isolated because of all this. And I, I want to know from Joan how many she got because there were at least 30 people on the, the page that are like, I'll send her one, I'll send her one, I'll send her one. And it's just like, just makes me happy. <laughs> people need that. There needs to be more, more love and kindness. And so yeah. that's got, where that yeah. came from. Yeah, we got one more question here from Isbear. Is bear is I Z B E A R. Well, hello. Hi, is bear. It says, Hi, Rebecca. How do you or did you go about finding voiceover classes and or teachers that helped you along the way? Great question. Great question. Um, I start asking people. I started looking online. Um, there is someone who who I know I still Richard Tatum Richard I don't know if you're out there right now uh I was talking to someone about voiceover like years ago and they said oh he does it talk to him so I took him out for lunch and I said hey I want to study where should I study he started giving me a list I go there then I ask other people who are you studying with and then they gave me a list and you look online and you just have to be um very judicial and do your uh research when you find a teacher, depending on if you're doing it online or if you're in LA or New York or something and just find people and I, and ask other people, what did you think about that teacher? Audit a class if you can. Um, Bob Bergen, I'll tell you a quick story as quick as I can. Um, very in the beginning, he was one of my first teachers and I wanted to study with him so bad and I asked, can I audit? And I went to the first class and audited and he has like a four year waiting list and somebody that night just didn't show up. And then at the end of the night, they called and they said, I can't come next week either or something. I can't remember. It was so long ago. And he just turned to me and he's like, well, you're here. You've already been here for the first class. You want in? I'm like, yes! Like, world aligns like that sometimes. So hopefully I answered your question. Just do your research and ask people you trust. 
go online to the Facebook community and ask people that you trust who they've studied with and see if you can audit. Makes sense. Every teacher has a different approach. So you don't know in like acting school, if you're going to like Strasburg or if you're going to like uh, Uta Hagen or any of these right. stuff, you right. just yeah. figure it out. What works Absolutely. for you? Yeah. Well, Rebecca, it's always great to see you. It's always great to see you in person because you and I both need a big hug, I think. Oh my God, I want to <laughs> hug you both so <laughs> Oh. Well, well, we'll get to it eventually. But thanks so much for being with us tonight. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for you. having me here. And uh, and good luck with all this cool stuff that you're doing right now. Thank you. And keep uh, everyone out there. We'll get through this. Keep working. We got it. All righty. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Well, George and I'll be right back to wrap this up into a nice, tight little something or other right after these messages. Hey guys, this is Tom, also known as the voice of SpongeBob SquarePants, and you want to fill your ear holes and your eye holes with Dan and George and the Audio Body Shop. Ah! Snails like it too. As a voice talent, you have to have a website. But what a hassle getting someone to do it for you. And when they finally do, they break or don't look right on mobile devices. They're not built for marketing and SEO. They're expensive. You have limited or no control. And it takes forever to get one built and go live. So what's the best way to get you online in no time? Go to voiceactorwebsites.com. Like our name implies, voiceactorwebsites.com just does websites for voice actors. We believe in creating fast, mobile-friendly, responsive, highly functional designs that are easy to read and easy to use. You have full control. No need to hire someone every time you want to make a change. And our upfront pricing means you know exactly what your costs are ahead of time. You can get your voiceover website going for as little as $700. So if you want your voice actor website without the hassle of complexity and dealing with too many options, go to voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. Now there's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products and services, while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. Voiceover Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, casting, home studio setup and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports and get 14 bonus reports on how to ace the voiceover audition. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. This is Anthony Mendez, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. Hey, it's that time of the show where we talk about our lovely sponsors, Source Elements, the busy bees that created Source Connect. And man, they are super, super busy. But the good news is because they've had so many new people added to their user base, so many new customers, they've also been able to, to expand their customer service at the same time. So that wasn't good. <laughs> that was cool. At this count, I believe Source Connect has over 10 um, tech support people at the ready now, you know, working essentially around the clock, you know, so they can service all the different markets and all the different continents uh, with tech support. And I, as far as I'm aware, there is no other uh, competing platform that has made that kind of an investment in tech support. Um, and I think that is just one of the many things that does set them apart. Um, they've been working on Source Connect for, it's been viable and used on promos and all sorts of big time production stuff for way north of 10 years. I think probably more than 12 years now. And uh, it's just getting more dialed in and honed. Um, you should get online, get, get signed up with an account so you can be available for Source Connect sessions when they fall in your lap, and if they do, or just so you can be available to audition for them. It's really important. Head to source-elements.com uh, source and get a 15-day free trial. Um, you definitely, 
definitely want to watch a video I produced on this. It's on YouTube on getting Source Connect standard for voiceover. It's also available at georgethetech.com slash SC. Check that video out, get a little user guide to learn how to use it. It's There's a process to setting it up, but once it is set up, it is seamless. It is smooth. Um, anyway, we appreciate their sponsorship and we'll be right back to wrap it up. Thank you. This is Anthony Mendez and you're watching VoiceOver Body Show. Oh, good. Well, God, it's always great to see Rebecca. Don't we never, you know, because we haven't seen anybody in a while, but especially her, one of the one of the really nice people in our business, and great to great to see. Indeed. Her. Yep. Uh, so uh, next week on this show, we'll have uh, it'll be Tech Talk number thirty six. Yep, we're going to tape that here in just a little bit. Yeah, so we'd love to get your tech questions. Uh, get them here in the Facebook chat room. But who are our donors of the week? Yes, and we are still getting donations, which we really appreciate. You can donate right on the website or get a subscription and be just on auto donate, donate, which I believe some of these folks are those kinds of people, like Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Trey Speaks for You, that's Trey's Mo, Trey Mosley, Thomas Pinto, Natasha Marshuka, Brian Page, Patty Gibbons, Diana Birdsall, and Uncle Roy of Antland Productions, all sponsors and or, or donors and i believe also subscribers uh on that on our donation system because their names come up over and over and over and over and over all which right. is freaking cool thank Absolutely. you everybody all right well uh we need to thank our sponsors too like harlan hogan's voiceover essentials voiceover extra source elements voheroes.com voiceactorwebsites.com and jmc demos all right well, thanks to Jeff Holman on chat room duty tonight and on Facebook and uh, our technical director who's pulling her hair out one strand at a time, uh, <laughs> Sue Merlino and Lee Penny, who was joining us tonight for just being Lee Penny. Well, we'll be back with Tech Talk next week, so stay tuned for we're going to record that now, but you can watch it anytime. You can watch this interview all week, too. That's going to do it for us. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B.S. Yes.